So you, you see the uh, quiz five and the part A of homework assignment two, right? Ten questions. Yeah. Those ten questions, uh, as I remember, about two questions related to these two topics. Two questions. Best case, worst case, right? I remember one worst case, one best case, quick sort. Yeah. Yeah. We do here, okay? Yeah. Best case, worst case. All right. Let's look at the worst case first. Yeah. Divide and conquer. I mentioned the idea last time. Divide and conquer some factors related to the worst case. And, uh, you know, control the worst case. Remember the merge sort? We control the worst case, merge sort, by split, splitting the data evenly. That's the typical way we can, you know, control. Do not make the worst case too bad. Yeah. Split the data evenly in the middle. Yeah. But for quick sort, we cannot. Quick sort, the reason is we randomly select the pivot element. How does the pivot element split the data? Nobody can control that. Nobody can control that. Yeah. For that reason, we may have bad worst case. Yeah. So that's, oh, yeah, let me connect my remote control. Yeah. All right. Look at the worst case. Yeah. Study the worst case. The worst case happens when the partition is extremely unbalanced. Extremal cases. We have extremal cases. Yeah. So let's look at extremal cases. All right. Look at this one, this diagram, the pivot. Other than the pivot, so all the elements are in the yellow region, one of the two regions, yeah. you know. Yeah. That extremal, you know, the two subarrays, we're supposed to split the original array into two subarrays, but here, other than pivot, only one subarray. The other one empty. That's one of the extremal cases. Yeah. All right, so all S region. So this is one. Yeah. Another, all elements in the green region, the L region. Yeah, larger, larger than the pivot. The first one smaller than the pivot. Yeah. These two extremal cases corresponding the worst case. Yeah. But to get a worst case, you need to have, for every partition, you have extremal cases, right? That's the worst case. For every partition, okay, from beginning to end, you have these one of the two extremal cases, then that's the worst case. Yeah. But you may have, you may have, think about ascending order and a descending order. These two cases, you will get the worst case every time. If the original array is already sorted in ascending order, another one in descending order. So you always get two bad extremal cases, one of the two. Yeah. All right. So then, because in that way, every time when you do divide and conquer, you only reduce the file size by one. Size reduction, only reduce size by one. That's small. Number reduction, yeah. yeah. So that means when you do recursion, you need to do you know many times. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Which one is worse? Yeah. So here, one is slightly worse than the other. One is slightly worse. Yeah. So the second one is slightly worse than the first one. Although they are both belong to the worst case. The second one, do you need to do swap operation? Yeah. The second one, you need to do swap operation, right? Yeah. 
But the first one, you do not need to do swap operation. Okay, yep. So here, uh, for example, the, you know, yeah, descending order, yeah? The second one corresponds to descending order, right? Descending order, yeah, you need to do swap operation at the end. Yeah. Every time you need to do swap operation. The first one corresponds to, let's say, ascending order. Ascending order, we, do, we never need to do swap operation. So for that part, although there are two worst cases, but second one slightly worse than the first one. Because you do a few more swap operations. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, so we can look at asymptotic notation on the recurrence relation for the worst case. Yeah. All right. Running time complexity function, if we use t of n, every time we only reduce the problem size by one, so we have this recurrence relation. T of n equals T of n minus 1 plus n minus 1. Because we need to do n minus 1 comparisons. Okay. Each element we need to compare with the pivot element. Yeah. All right, yeah. And solving this recurrence relation very easy, right? Just do iterations you know, several times. We can get this number of comparisons. Yeah. This many. That's big theta of n squared. So this worst case, big theta of n squared. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. Yeah. Very slow. Yeah. Yeah. But for the quick sort, if your array randomly selected, you know, so in the real world situation, the array pretty much random. Yeah. So when you do the sorting, the data, you know, near random data. So then the percentage to get these two, bad or worst case, extremely small. Yeah. And when we consider the average case efficiency, you know, yeah. so the overall average for the quick sort, yeah. still uh, very good better than other, most other known algorithms. Yeah. Yeah. Much better, okay? Known algorithms. Yeah. Yeah. Probably some not well known, some, you know, sophisticated, you know, probably do, can do better, yeah. yeah. But not very popular, yeah. Not many people know, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, so big theta of n squared. So we know worst case efficiency, big theta of n squared. Yeah. These two as the example of the worst case. Ascending order, descending order. Yeah. All right. Next, we want to look at, yeah, so example, yeah, so here I just run a few, do experiments a few times. Yeah. So look at this example. Yeah. This is descending order. So the next time when we do partition, yeah, because after swap, yeah, pivot element is in place yeah, after swap. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, so that eight also in place, yeah. But we use eight as the pivot. Okay, yeah, next one. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, this time two as the pivot. So we need to do swap. Okay, all right. So then seven, the pivot. So then we do not do swap. Okay, yeah. All right. So then next time, next time. So then the last round, yeah, like that. So you see, yeah. uh, not efficient. So this worst case. Yeah. So you see, yeah. not efficient. Yeah. All right. So very slow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so the, yeah, right. 
Then, best case, yeah, D.6, now we want to look at the best case efficiency for quick sort. Yeah. Yeah. Because for, for insertion sort, we know the best case very fast. Insertion sort, best big theta of n. Big theta of n. Yeah. So here we also want to see for quick sort, what is the best case? Efficiency. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here we can only use some approximation method to estimate the best case. Yeah. Approximation method. Yeah. Remember, when we did merge sort analysis, we used that approximation method, right? We draw the recursion tree. Yeah. Here we can also draw recursion tree. Yeah. The same type. Yeah. The best case. It happens at the most balanced partition. Most balanced. It's in the middle, okay? Yeah. So our pivot happens to split two subarrays with same size. Yeah. That's the best case, yeah. like this. Yeah. So our recurrence relation, yeah. 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 like this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here, Although we use asymptotic notation. Yeah. So here, when we solve recurrence range, we should, we should not use asymptotic notation, right? Yeah. Because if you use asymptotic notation in computation, that's not good. Yeah. So in our, asymptot in our computation, when we have situation like this, we want to replace this term by C times N. C is a constant multiple. C times N to avoid asymptotic notation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, with constant C. Okay. All right. Now we can construct recursion tree, yeah. similar to the way we did for merge sort. Yeah. Recursion tree. Yeah. We split. This is every time we split the node to Subnodes, yeah, all right, with the half of the previous size, and we accumulate non recursion cost CN, that's the non recursion cost we accumulate. All right, so here, but we need to estimate how many levels do we have when we move down? How many levels? Okay, all right, yeah, so this is the you know, recursion tree, yeah, we do, but we only collect non-recursion cost. Recursion, because we, you know, generate the recursion step, generate the cost implemented in those non-recursion terms. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. So each level, you can see the non-recursion cost, if you add up, the same num number. Each level, Cn, the total, Cn, okay? Each level, Cn, okay? All right. So how many levels? You have k levels. The k approximately log base 2 of n. Log base 2 of n. Yeah. So the cost, big theta of n log n. Estimate. So good enough. So this estimate. So not the you know, rigorous mathematics, but as the approximation in our computer science analysis. So it's you know, good enough. Now you can see for the quick sort, the best case efficiency big theta of n log n. Yeah. It's not an n, not like uh, insertion sort. Big theta of n. Yeah. Merge sort, we also have this. Merge sort, the same as this. Best case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, so that's the, you know, yeah. yeah. But the average case, the problem average case is very hard to estimate. And we know it's in this category because average cannot be better than the 
best case, right? Yeah. Cannot be better than the best case. Yeah. Only worse than the best case. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly worse than the best case. Yeah. But people can only do experiment to see the average case. Experiments. It's hard to do math analysis on the average case. Because it's hard to control data distribution. How do you control how the data is distributed? Every recursion, how data is distributed, you cannot control it. So it's hard. All right. Okay, yeah, so that's the, you know, uh, quick sort. Yeah. Then, so what else? How to improve? Yeah, so here, for improvement, here I can only talk about, you know, some experiment result. Yeah. Because people like to improve a little bit. Yeah. One way to improve, to avoid those two extreme worst cases, right? Two extreme worst cases. Ascending order, descending order. Think about people. So we want to avoid ascending order, descending order. So we want to find a way to break it. Yeah. Ascending order, descending order. One way is the randomization technique. Randomization technique. Yeah. So randomization, this idea, we want, typically people use the randomization so you select the pivot randomly. That's the randomization. Yeah. Not, not always the last one. Always the first one, right? Always last one, always the first one. Then you, <coughs> you cannot be the ascending order, descending order. You cannot avoid that. But we just modify our, you know, pivot selection slightly. When we select pivot, we select random element anywhere. Yeah. All right. So this step, yeah, we have yeah. So the random sampling, yeah. the idea, you select a random element, then swap with the last one. Okay, you just you need to pay a little more cost. The cost is you need to swap that randomly selected element with the last element. Yeah. A little more cost. Yeah. So then, you, remaining, you just run the original uh, pa partition, yeah, quick sort. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so this, you know, beat that ascending order, descending order. At least you can you can you can improve. You can, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And another idea, yeah. because people, we do not want to pay too much cost when we select pivot, right? The cost, if the cost is relatively high, not worth it. Not worth it. So another modification that method, median of three partition. Just do a little more work than the randomization. Media of three, you select arbitrary three elements. Media, three elements, and you find the media of the three. You need to do three comparisons. Find the media of three. Okay? Randomly select three elements in the array. Then find the media of them with three comparisons. Then you use that median of three as the pivot. Do the swap with the pivot element. So this time, you do a little better, right? Yeah. Slightly better, okay? Yeah. Comparing with the randomization, you do a little more work, but results should be, you know, slightly better. Yeah, okay, all right. Use it as the pivot. Yeah. But when we do the experiments, yeah, so here I want to you know, report 
you know, the result, experiments. Yeah. With little overhead, the occurrence of extremely on is greatly reduced. I remember I assigned this as a programming project before, yeah. you know, uh, several years ago. Yeah. Our students to compare, okay? Random, original quicksort. So randomization and media of three, the result, very close, very close. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The reason because the extreme, we use randomly generated data. Okay. So the ascending order, descending order, that's rare. Okay. Yeah. That's rare. But randomization and uh, media of three, you need to pay, you know, pivot selection cost. Actually, the medium of three, slower. Slower than the you know, other two methods. Yeah, because you do some extra redundant, it, the work does not improve much. Yeah, that's the result. So we do experiment. Yeah, question? Yeah, every, everywhere, yeah. So, yeah. So, you can control. If the size is too small, then you may not do it. Yeah. So you can control how do you do it. Yeah, but basically, you know, when we start, yeah, every, every time when we do competition, we, we do that. Yeah. yeah, but our experiment result, you know, these two, you know, not better than original. Yeah. Because we, we pay some extra cost. And the data are pretty much random. Random. So the worst case never, never appear. The worst case. Yeah. Never appear. So that's the reason. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, the quick sort. All right. So we finish. And, uh, and, uh, uh, part, uh, module four. Yeah. Oh, I also need to post uh, part B of home assignment uh, two with ten questions. So mainly, uh, mainly uh, problem solving. Yeah, pro yeah, all ten question problem solving. Yeah. Problem solving. So definitely we have some new problem solving questions. Merge sort, right? You know, because insertion we may have, you know, a few. Questions related to the insertion, merge, yeah, you know, quick sort, yeah, yeah, quick sort, quick sort. Uh, usually, we do not do in the problem solving because it's hard to hard to make questions related to the quick sort. Yeah, quick sort. Basically, I just check your if you are familiar. If you can, if you can do the. Quick sort partition. I only ask you to do one partition. If you can do manually, if you understand the detail to do the manual, manual way. Yeah, so that's about a quick sort. Yeah. For other topics, you may have a few problem solving questions. Yeah. But uh, remember, uh, in our, uh, you know, the midterm, Homework assignment one, uh, for a few problem solving questions, some students didn't do well. So I'm thinking about if I give a few more. Yeah. Although I, so I, uh, I give those, yeah, I haven't post, uh, you know, second chance. Yeah. I, I plan to do that, you know, post second chance to improve you know, for those students. Because you need to study. You need to study the solution, completely understand. The, the question is, uh, when I did a grading, uh, those students, they didn't study the, the solutions, answers. So they didn't use our methods, our typical methods. So I want to find a way to you know, push those students to study you know, the given solutions. Yeah. So I asked them to use their own words own understanding to write the solutions to get 50% of the missing points. Yeah. So in that round, hopefully push them study, you know, relatively hard problem solving questions. Yeah. 
So then in my homework assignment two and the final, uh, these two chances, I may like to give, uh, you know, each one, two questions. Two questions, you know, all the problem solving questions. I want to check if, if they can do, yeah, because we cannot give too many, okay? Too many, we do not have that, that much room. Yeah. So, because our problem solving question, only 10 questions, right? Homework assignment two, only 10 questions. Final, we also have 10 questions for problem solving, okay? Final was still, you know, the concept questions. Uh, yeah, I may like to give you 15 concept questions in the quiz format, still quiz format. Okay, so you, oh, sorry. Oh, oh the opposite, sorry, I, I'm wrong. The concept questions, 10, the problem solving, 15. Yeah, 15, we have a little more room. Yeah, so. I can give you a few uh, old problem solving questions because we have total 15. Yeah. We have some room. Yeah. Yeah. So finals the same, 10 concept questions, but we use the quiz way to deliver. Quiz, quiz number six. Now you're working on quiz number five, right? So number six, that's our first 10 questions of the final. Yeah. Quiz number six our first 10 final questions. Okay, all right, so in class, the two hours, okay, so I'll give you 15 questions. So I'll give you 15 questions. Final, okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah so let's switch the topic. Module five, heap sort, our last module. So the topic we call advanced data structure because we need to talk about data structure, advanced data structure a little bit. So let you see the importance of the advanced data structure. So our last topic, last module. Last module, actually two topics. One is the heap sort, another hashing. Hashing search algorithm, also important. Another very useful topic. Yeah. All right. All right, yeah. Module five, advanced data structures, part A, heap sort. Heap sort, yeah. I need a two lectures, yeah. part A, part B. Yes. So today, you know, the first part. Yeah. 8.1, introduction to heap sort. Yeah. Why we need to do it? First, motivation part. Why we need to do this special sorting algorithm? Yeah. Because after we have after we have quick sort and after we have merge sort, yeah, if we want very fast, we can use quick sort, right? If we want to avoid very bad sort, we can use merge sort, right? Yeah. But there is another topic. Yeah, so, I, yeah. so before I start this one, I may like to, you know, mention that there is a concept because related to uh, the quiz five and the homework assignment. Yeah. I give one question. Yeah. So let me say something about that question. Yeah, probably our first question, early question. I talk about a concept called in-place algorithms. Yeah. So here, yeah. let me say something about in-place algorithm.
Okay? First, this concept, I hope you do not get confused because when we have, we talk about in place elements in array, that concept a lot, right? Yeah, because I notice some, sometimes some students get confused. So when I talk about in place algorithm, they use the in place elements to explain things. So that's different. In place algorithm. Meaning is the extra space used. Yeah. So you need to look at the extra space. Extra space, we mean the space used other than input output. Yeah. Because input output, that's the minimum amount of space you need to use, input output. But other than that, you need to use some extra amount of space but that extra part, if your algorithm can control that in big theta of one, that means bounded by constant. The extra space used bounded by some constant number. Okay? Then, if your algorithm has this property, you say it's in place algorithm. In place algorithm. Okay? Yeah. Then you use this understanding to, un to answer you know, our first question. I'll give you four options. Which one is not in place? Okay? So you look at the implementation detail. So what extra space we need to use? Okay? Yeah. 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 So when you look at the merge sort, in the, for the merge sort, we use auxiliary arrays, right? Yeah? yeah. Merge sort, you can see, those two auxiliary arrays cannot be eliminated. Yeah. At least our current method. No. So, I, so it, if people want to eliminate those auxiliary, it, it's very challenging. So here, I, I do not know the solution. Yeah. Yeah. If someone can find a way to eliminate, so that would be great. That's a very big contribution to the computer algorithms. Yeah. So I never heard of that. Okay? Yeah. So it probably, so here I just guess, probably it's an open question still. Open question. Yeah. You know, yeah. So our current knowledge, we, we cannot eliminate those two auxiliary arrays for the merge sort. Okay? Yeah. For quick sort, we can eliminate auxiliary arrays, right? Yeah. We, we know that, yeah. But, but when you look at a quick sort, now, now I want to say a, a few words about for the quick sort. Although each partition is an in place algorithm, right? Each here we only talk about one partition. One partition, it is in place in place algorithm because actual space used. Bounded by big theta of one. Yeah. But if you look at the whole quick sort, it may not be that simple. Because the whole quick sort, you have to use recursion, right? Yeah. Because quick sort, you have to use recursion. When you use recursion, you may use some deep stack, right? Because your stack could, could be deep. So you push you know, your temporary arrays in a stack. Could be very deep. So you, you may have a deep stack. If your stack could be that deep, you know, hard to control, to be shorter, the stack, that's the extra space you used, right? That's the memory space you use in that stack. How can you say it's a big theta of one extra space? Yeah. So when we look, when we try to determine if an algorithm is in place or not, if it's a recursive algorithm, then 
in general, it's not in place. Yeah. Generally, because you have, you need your stack. You may have some deep stack, okay? But if you can avoid recursion, if you use for loop, if your implement, you can modify your implementation to use for loop to implement, then you can avoid that, that stack problem, that stack resource problem. Yeah. That's the biggest drawback of recurs recursive algorithms. Yeah. Biggest drawback, the stack, the amount of memory used for recursive algorithms. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So other than that, you know, very powerful. Yeah. So very uh, efficient, powerful. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So now, based on that understanding, yeah, that understanding you can answer at least the first question in the quiz. Okay? Yeah. Here, so this part, yeah, so far from beginning to this point, we covered at least the three questions in the in the quiz, five. Three questions. Thirty percent. Yeah, three questions. Yeah. All right, yeah. So let's look at the special requirements. Sorting with special requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes if your so your business may need some special requirements. Yeah. So not the general requirements. So yeah. so here just one example, the first requirement. The worst case efficiency is big theta of n log n. So we want to control that worst case efficiency. So the bottleneck control. Because worst case, that's the bottleneck. Yeah. Yeah. Some situations, you want to avoid that bottleneck. OK? Yeah. So the worst case. Yeah. So this one, we need to avoid that worst case. So worst case, we want to make it, you know, not too far away from the average case. Yeah, this is supposed to be the average case. So not very far away from the average case. In the same category. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so merge case, uh, merge, merge sort, we have this property. Yeah. Second requirement, in place, that property. Yeah, so the algorithm must be in place. Second requirement. Yeah. So our merge sort, our quick sort are not qualified for this point number two. Requirement number two. Those two algorithms, they are not qualified for this one. Okay? All right. Yeah. Number three, maintain dynamic data efficiently. So here I need to explain that, dynamic data. Yeah. Yeah. Because your data come and go, right? Yeah. So when you run your applications, yeah. here we can imagine, so this sorting algorithm, this sorting algorithm, we, we run it in, in our some special application, supporting our special application. Yeah. In, but it, in our application, we need to keep maintaining the data. Yeah. So we may, when we run, we collect a new data okay, in the array. And sometimes we need to delete data. Delete. You know. So we need to keep maintaining the, the structure. Okay? Yeah. So we need this. Maintain dynamic data efficiently. That's another requirement. Okay, these three requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So, can we find a good sorting algorithm that can satisfy these three requirements? So then, that's the challenge. So we need to use advanced data structure to solve this problem. Okay, all right. So let let's look at a solution. Okay, let's do the analysis. Yeah. Dynamic data efficiently. All right, so yeah, let me talk about this dynamic data manipulation, maintenance manipulation first, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. All right, insertion first, insertion. Think about, suppose you have an array, okay? 
you have an ordered array. So you want to maintain your data in an ordered array. But when you have a new data comes in, when you do the insertion, you need to pay this much cost, big theta of n cost. That cost is relatively high. Yeah, that cost is relatively high. Yeah. So we're not satisfied. Big theta of m, that, you know, too much. We're not satisfied. Okay? Yeah. So we want, if we can get big theta of log n, then we feel well, that's good enough. Yeah. Just a you know, binary search. If we can build a structure that allows us to do the binary search, okay, all right, yeah, to insert the new data, then we are satisfied. We are satisfied, okay. So our this is our goal. Our goal is big theta of log n. Okay, all right. So idea. We need a new data structure, but this. Data structure you can imagine. It should. It should have the you know, binary tree structure, right? Yeah, binary tree structure. In order to get search operation, big O of log n, if we have a binary tree, we search in that tree, then we can get a log n. Yeah. Yeah. So this tells us. We should. We need to think about building a binary tree structure for this data structure. The underlying, the underlying data structure should be a binary tree. But a binary tree, when you build a binary tree, you may have many different ways binary tree. Okay. Yeah. Some of the binary tree may not be good because think about the sum of the binary tree. You go all the way to the one side. You don't you don't have you know binary branches you know. You just you, so it's a skewed or biased binary tree. <laughs> go all the way one side, so that's a bad binary tree. So, so we call it unbalanced. So the binary tree is not that balanced. Okay? Yeah. So when you build a binary tree, we want to make it not necessarily the most balanced, but close the balance. As close to a balanced binary tree as possible. Yeah. That's what we want to have. Okay? As close as possible. Binary tree. Yeah. All right. Design of data structure. Yeah. Make it as simple as possible. We don't want to make the data structure very complicated. Yeah. You know, the manipulation cost could be too complicated. Yeah, so that's not good. Okay? So we want to you know, make the implementation as simple as possible. Here, candidates. So in order to build this kind of binary tree structure, tree, binary tree, each node, you need to know it's left child node and the right child node, right? Yeah. So basically, so for the current node, what is its left child node? What is its right child node? You need to know that, okay? Yeah. But to know that, it looks like you need some concept similar to that pointer, right? Yeah. Because how do you get the, to the left child? You need to follow some pointer, right? Or po fo po po follow something similar to pointer. It may not be exact of the pointer, but you need that functionality. Okay? Yeah. Because in Java, we, we know there is no pointer, right? Yeah. You know, references. We do not use a pointer directly. Yeah. So you need some you know, similar way to let you know so where to go. 
Okay? Yeah. All right. So the candidates, we may choose here yeah. two candidates. One is array. Can we use array? Array is very simple data structure. So we're familiar with array. Yeah. All right. Another one is linked list. Linked list, we feel not as good as array. Yeah, because you know, to maintain linked list, you know, the pointer, you know, yeah. So where, you know, that linked list. Yeah. A lot of work. More work you need to do. Yeah. All right. Linked list. But it, at least it tells us we can go somewhere, right? We can go left branch, right branch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now the question. Yeah. Yeah. Array is simpler. Yeah. Linking is too complicated. We want to avoid. Yeah. But if we can use array to store a binary tree then we won't use linked list. Yeah. So next question is, can we use array to store a binary tree inside an array without pointers? Because in array, we don't like to use pointers or references or things like that. Yeah. But we still, we want to keep track of the left child node right child node. We need to know, know that information. That's the challenge. Okay? That's the challenge for our data structure design. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The next, another question. Other than this, this one, there is another question. Maintain dynamic data. So data you know, comes in, come and go. Yeah. So, because when the data come and go, you need to maintain the same data structure, right? You don't want to break your data structure. You need to recover. Yeah. So actually, it, you may break it. Yeah. You may break it occasionally. But when that happens, you need to recover the data structure with a minimum cost. Not too costly. It will recover, recovery step too expensive. Then it's not good. Yeah. So we want to recover with, you know, acceptable cost. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Efficiently. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you use a rate directed, then it's not efficient. Yeah. Because insertion is not efficient. Right. Deletion also not efficient. You know, you need to, you know, shift. Do shifting. If you do shifting, it's not efficient. Yeah. All right. Now, so we need to modify it. Modify it to make it more efficient. All right. So next, yeah. we want to build a binary tree structure in an array. Yeah. How to modify the array? Yeah. All right. Data stored in the array. So let's look at when we store data in us. Sequential order, you know, elements organized in sequential order. That's the array. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Assume sorted. Yeah. Assume sorted currently. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, yeah, we, we sort it. But when new data comes in, then we need to put a new element in the right place and make it sorted. Yeah. All right. Initial sorting only once new data comes in, data not in order, yeah. but we want to make it in order efficiently. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the insertion, we are not satisfied with big theta of n solution, yeah. and we target big theta of log n solution. Yeah. So in our design, yeah. all right. 
So the insertion here, linear search and the binary search. But linear search, we get a big theta of n, right? So that's not good. So we want to have the similar efficiency of the binary search. Yeah. All right. How to get it? Yeah. So here we need to introduce a new data structure. Binary tree data structure, underlying. Yeah. So underlying storage, that's the original array. But inside the original array, we want to build relationship among elements addressing parent-child relationships. Parent-child relationship. How, you, uh, how do you address parent-child relationship? If you can do that, you solve the problem. Parent child, with using some easy method to address parent child relationship. Okay, all right. With array as its underlying data holder, maintain the parent child relationship. All right. So the, the, the solution is simple and smart. Simple and smart. All right, 8.2, binary tree structure in array. Yeah, so let, let's, look. how do we define the parent-child relationship? Yeah. How to build a binary tree inside an array? Yeah. We introduced the heap data structure. Now, the concept, the heap, what's the heap data structure? Properties we need use an array as the underlying storage object. First property. Second, when we build a binary tree, so we want to make it close to balanced, as close as possible to the balance the binary chain. So here, we call it a near complete binary chain. We may not get complete. Complete, that's the most balanced binary chain, right? The complete. But for a complete binary tree, the number of nodes must be power of two minus one, right? How to get a complete binary tree? The node number must have this structure, 2 to the k minus 1. If your n is not in this one, this structure, then you cannot get a complete binary tree. But if we cannot com get a complete binary tree, we want to get a near complete binary tree. So what do you mean near complete binary tree? How near, right? Yeah, how near? How do you describe that near concept? Okay? All right. Yeah. So very straightforward. Yeah. Let's fill in the uh, binary tree level by level. Okay? Yeah. Top level, next level, you know, top down approach from left to right. Let's pack the elements that way. At the bottom level, when you run out of the elements, yeah. because sooner or later, you will use up all your elements, but that occur at the bottom level, right? Yeah. So sooner or later, so when you, you know, arrange your elements, in order, must be in order, top down, bottom from right, from left to right, in that order, when you, you know, run out of the elements, you get a near complete binary tree. Near, that means only the bottom level is not full, not full. Other than the bottom level, all the other levels, full, full, okay? No room, yeah. All the other levels, all failed, okay? 
all failed. Yeah. Or if you remove the bottom level, you get a complete binary chain. Okay? So then you add the bottom level, but when you add them, you have to add in order from left to right in that order. You cannot jump. Okay? You cannot jump here and there. All right? So you have to follow the natural order. Okay? That's the near complete binary chain. A heap has this data structure. Uh, has this structure first because we need more properties. Still not enough. We need more properties. All right. Yeah. So only bottom level may not be filled. Yeah. Property number three: sufficient space for dynamic data. Yeah. That's a, a, another requirement. We need to think of. Because think about the property of an array. When you store data in array, we know array, the size must be fixed, right? When you create an array, you have to de declare specific size of that array. But that are, you don't know how many elements you need to store, right? Because it's data dynamic. How many elements you need? It's unknown. So the array size, you can only use prediction. You can only do prediction. But if your array capacity is full, how do you do it? What you should do? Your array capacity is full, you need to find a way to make a larger array to store your data and recycle your old array. So you can create a new larger array and copy the data, right? You need to copy the data from old array to new array. So you have more room, more space. So the old array can be recycled. Okay? Release the memory of the old array. Now you have an old, newer, larger array. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Certain relationship among nodes. Parent-child relationship. You still you need to address that. Parent-child relationship. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here you can see yeah. you need to consider all these points in your Data structure design. Question. How much space is sufficient? We don't know. We just predict. At the beginning, when we start, so we allocate certain amount of space, but we need to keep monitoring the space usage, right? Yeah. When it is close to full, you know, near, you know, the capacity level, you know, the line. You need to prepare for <laughs> creating a new array. Yeah. All right. Hard to know, so we just, you know, keep monitoring the, our data usage, yeah. our data structure usage. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How to make array space sufficient? For dynamic data, yeah. so let me, you know, talk about this topic. So you know, before we finish today, uh, in less than ten minutes, yeah, let me try to finish this slide. Yeah. And then next time, you know, we do the uh, heap uh, data structure definition. Yeah. All right, it is unknown about the amount of incoming data. Nobody knows. Although we can make prediction, but, but sooner or later, our array will be full. Yeah. So we need to get ready for that. So idea, assign certain amount of space to an array initially. Keep adding data and then monitoring the size closely. Yeah. When a threshold is reached. Yeah. So when you monitor it, yeah. 
For example, one way you need to you know think about if ninety percent of the capacity is used, if you cross that ninety percent line, yeah, that's very close to full, right? You know, eighty percent, ninety percent, you can control that threshold. So that's the threshold. If a threshold is reached, a new array with larger size. Yeah, sometimes people double the size. Okay, yeah, larger. Yeah, or, or you can control. So you just add, you know, you know, extra certain number of extra storage locations. Yeah, larger size is created, and copy the data to the new array. You need to do copy. Data copy may take take time, right? Yeah. So data copy. Think about if the your array is large. You have millions of elements, millions. So when you copy from one array to another, do you need some time to 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 do the copy from one array to another? Right? Yeah. So think about. Usually, it is expensive to copy a larger array. Usually, it's expensive to do that copy. Slower, expensive means, you know, from the time, time consumption point of view, slower. Okay, all right. So, like when you do copy, look at this peak. Yeah. So this, you know, time consumption. So we use this curve to monitor the, you know. The CPU time consumption, yeah. If you do not do copy, you know, so you can do your processing, you know, pretty flat, right? You, because you do not need too much too, too much time. But at some point, because you need, so you monitor, you 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 detect your array is near full. You know, cross the line of the threshold. Now you want to create a larger array and make copy millions of elements from old array to new array. That may take relatively long time, right? Yeah. Here, this peak, you can imagine several seconds, reasonable, right? Two or three seconds, that could be reasonable, but. In your application, if you ask your users to wait two or three seconds, that could be, you know, the experience could be bad, right? Think about, it, you know, so your users' experience most of the time very smooth, but when it get to some point, suddenly, you know, lagging about two or three seconds is that. That's very bad, right? Yeah. So you need to find a way to fix that problem. You need to find a way to remove that peak. Can you, can you eliminate that peak thing? Eliminate that peak thing. You still you need to copy the elements, but avoid. You use a lot of time to copy. Large block of data, okay. Yeah, do not make your users wait certain period of time. Yeah. Think about the solution. Yeah. yeah, so you may need to write, you know, design some your algorithm to solve this problem. This, you know. Peak time bottleneck this problem. Yeah. All right, so you want to spread the data copy evenly, all right? Yeah, you can. You still do the data copy. Can you? Can you? So every time when you do data copy, you copy relatively fewer number of items. Then next time you copy a few, but not too many. Copy a few, but spread in a relatively wide range, not short range. Here, because the reason you do it in a short period of time, then you need to spend a lot of time. If you spread 
very wide range. Can you make the you know lower down your peak, right? Yeah. Even it, you know, smooth it, smooth it, right? Yeah. So here the idea is very simple. So you can think think about it this way. Yeah, just two minutes. Here, let me describe the idea in two minutes. Okay, all right. Now, I still, I monitor, I use the threshold to monitor the data usage. Okay, all right. Now, let me reduce. Yeah. Seven per, Seventy percent, I start doing the copy. Okay, I start earlier. Seventy percent. Okay, I start, I create a new array. I start doing copy. But every time when a new data comes in, I only copy, let's say, 100 elements. After I copy 100 elements, I stop. I can, I can process the, another element. Okay? Another new element comes in, then I copy another 100 elements. If I copy 100 elements, that won't be too slow, right? Yeah. Every time when one new element comes in, I copy 100 elements. How about that? Then, you know, the user will not notice the significant delay, right? Significant lagging because you only need to wait the time copying 100 elements. That's very fast. A few milliseconds. Let's imagine just a few milliseconds, right? So the user won't experience, you know, significant lagging problem, okay, yeah? But you can see after some time, because this one to 100 ratio, sooner, so, you know, when you copy, when you copy, think about, when you copy 10%, if one to 10 ratio, 10%, you copy all of them, right? And not 100, okay? If one to 10 ratio, if you copy, if you process 10% elements, you 10, you multiply 10, that's 100. Okay. 1 to 10 ratio already good enough, not 100. 1 to 100 ratio, okay? Yeah. Here you can see there is a solution, graceful solution. So you avoid this problem. So in the real world, many problems like this. So you fix the, solve the problem. Yeah. You look at the problem from your user's experience. Yeah. And you find a solution, make your user, you know, Feel good, yeah. All right, yeah. So next time, let's look at the heap data structure design. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here, just the background information. Yeah. All right, that's it.